Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for another movie review. This time, this is the sequel follow-up to Netflix's Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon. This is part two, The Scar Giver. So this is a continuation from the characters Cora, Jimmy, Titus, and others that are trying to defend a local colony from the tyranny against them. Um, this is the same as that cast. They are back full swing. And we're here to kind of break down what the second movie follow-up was. I have here my co-host, Busy Brian. What's up, Busy? What's up, man? What's up? How you doing, man? Um, I'm all right. I'm it's gonna be interesting to talk about this for sure. Yeah. Nah, I appreciate you for showing up. This is one so, of the this is one of the movies of all time for sure. Yep. Um, one of the things I wanted to kind of ask you before we got into this busy, it's like the first movie, what was your brief thoughts on the first movie? Like, what was it about the first movie that made you enticed to go and check to the second one? So the thing is, I was a firm believer, like the first one, there was a lot of world building, a lot of just character building. And I was really hanging on the idea of, oh, let's, <laughs> let's uh, check this out. Let's wait. This is going to be building up everything, and the second one's going to be crazy. Like, they're going to, you know, give us all the character stuff here, and the next one's just going to be full of action. So um, I really wanted to see uh, the vision. I, I really enjoyed what they were kind of doing in the first one, and so it did give me hope, and, you know, uh, you know, I was really excited for the second one uh, just because of that first one. You know, I was trying to be optimistic, but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I kind of was the same way. Like, I kind of was like, there's enough interesting characters and dynamics that I was, like, curious to see where it was going to go. And spoiler alert for people that haven't seen the first movie, there were two big actors that were kind of, like, died at the end of the first one. And then there was, like, a, a interesting hangover where you're like, okay, what is this cliffhanger? What happened to this character um, played by Ed? And um, Atticus going into this one, is in full swing you don't really know kind of what he's truly capable of but it all hinges upon Cora's past and who Cora is at her core and what her redemption is all about the question in merit is was this a good time I think that ultimately is the biggest thing because a lot of people are not looking for this to be you know a Stanley Kubrick film they're not even looking at this to be Star Wars or Star Trek it's more so Zack Snyder has a fundamental way of being able to take something that is a concept or something that is adapted and make it look amazing, especially when it comes to action. I will say the, the positive that I can kind of go into this one is from the first one going into this one. At a certain point, which I'll get to that in a little bit, try to be real brief about that, they do go crazy. Uh, the action is ramped up a lot more than it was in the first one. The first one was, like Busy said, more about world building they allowed there to be true space warfare in this one and i love the fact that you know jimon and sophia were leading the charge in a lot of those pretty well choreographed action sequences um but the the thing about it and this is the caveat to this because a lot of you guys have already said it you want to kind of see what is the unrated version where's the blood where's the gore where's like somebody's head getting blown off like like, what, what does this look like on an unrated level? We have not seen the unrated version of episode two. I'm sorry, movie two. And we've not seen the unrated version of movie one. That is not something at this point. It's not projected to come out until August, if I'm not mistaken. I think initially it was going to be the end of April. So I, I will stress that there are certain things that we're going to critique because it feels a little toned down. The action is ramped up in this one. That's one of the sentiments I can say. Mm -hmm. I do think that... The problem with when the action kicks off is a little late and a dollar short because in the very beginning of the movie, the first 30 minutes of this, it was a lot of exposition. It was a lot of waiting to kind of build to the point where the war is about to start. And that journey to get to that was very lackadaisical and made me a little tired. I, I honestly was getting exhausted to kind of wait until it got to that point. But when it did get to that point, that's when, I mean, I mean, Busy literally watched me. Like, I pepped up, and I was like, okay, all right, we're in this. <laughs> Let's see where we're going to go. Yeah, you got a second win like you were a runner. 
And That's some crazy. characters really do get to shine. Again, I, I can't stress enough that I think that Sophia as this character is not a miscast. I think that she's more than capable in terms of her acting prowess and also her action is very believable. The thing about it is when she ramps up and when she's really going in, I feel like a lot of times it is it is tailored. Like you don't really get to see a lot of those amazing shots that are visually done well. Some of the camera work is done really well because it seems like, yes, this is cool, but I know for a fact this could go a lot more off the chain. And I feel like even in this one, unfortunately, even though the action is ramped up, it isn't as much payoff as we would have wanted from warfare. And there's by the, the third act, it gets crazy. Like some of the sequences that are kind of even in space in the air are just nuts to just think about from what I actually recall. Um, Anthony Hopkins, they give his character Jimmy a lot to do. Um, I love most of his sequences in there. But again, it goes and falls back into the same pitfall. I know for a fact there's more. I know for a fact that it can go a lot more off the chain. And unfortunately, the chain isn't broken just yet on this. And um, everything else, that's where it's going to get into some small negatives that I can go into. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to go too deep into it. I'm going to let Busy talk some of his positives from on uh, this part, uh, episode, uh, sorry, movie two. All right, so the one thing I do want to say is that I think this movie is carried by its visuals 100%. And um, that's one thing I think that Zack Snyder does really well. I mean, some of these shots are just insane. But at the end of the day, when it comes to the action, I think you were right. It did feel really toned down. Um, obviously, you don't want to compare it to a lot of other f- films. I mean, it's hard to not compare it to Star Wars sometimes. But the thing is, I mean, we got a scene where we got these weapons kind of look like lightsabers. But when we're seeing them cutting through people, but not actually cutting through people, it just it's like, OK, like it feels like something's missing there. Obviously, you don't need pure violence and gore for it to be good. But when something like that's happening, like like when you're using a weapon of that caliber and these people are just falling over without, you know, us seeing actually what it's capable of. It just feels a little underwhelming. But other than that, there were some crazy scenes. And um, again, I really don't want to count this franchise out yet. But when the rated R movies uh, do drop, I will be seated. Because I'm really hoping that like some of these scenes are just going to be... I feel like they're going to be a little amplified. Just And I know that sounds sick. Like, like it, it shouldn't be more enjoyable because I'm seeing limbs flying across the scene. But at the end of the day, I mean, the the, the way these weapons look, the way the, the choreography is, I feel like it's just going to be really cool to see how it kind of translates to, to the screen, you know? And who knows? Maybe if it, it does better than the originals, uh, we'll get the third one just a straight-up rated R. Yeah, I, I think that, and I'll be brief about this. One of the things that I remember is when Deadpool 2 came initially to Disney+, Plus. I think that there was a PG-13 version of that. No, nope. that's the thing. I don't know if you remember, but they released the PG-13 version in um, theaters. Yeah. When it was like a month or two after the original came out, they made, I think, a Christmas version yeah. of it, and they called it like something, but it was the same movie, essentially, just rated pg-13 that way more people could you know and I, I like that i do but at the same time it's like i i feel like they should do whatever the main you know um whatever the main idea or the creative whatever the creative mind or of the the main person involved has i feel like they should go for that yeah. you know i don't think the studio should be like hey well we should tone it down and then if you want to make another one because i mean i want the original to be the one that's like not being disrupted by the studio you know what I'm saying? I want I want the original made by the creatives and not, you know, I, I feel like it's more enjoyable that way when there's not any interference. Yeah, the reason why I brought it up is because that movie, and then I'm going to use another example of Venom 2 um, directed by Andy Serkis, uh, which was Woody Harrelson as Carnage. Um, with Deadpool 2, you could feel like a lot of the jokes and a lot of the things that would just be off the wall crazy, when it's toned down, it just feels different. It's not to say it's not digestible. It's not to say it's yeah. not necessarily less entertaining, but it's different. And it's, 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 it's something that's very noticeable. And sometimes that can throw off you even care. I don't think I'll ever go and see Deadpool PG-13 2 again. 
honestly. I, I don't have a need to. I'd just rather see what it initially was. And it harkens back to what you said. One of the things that Andy Serkis has said that before they went into post-production or pre-production was that he was like, this is going to be rated R. This is going to be this. And there was a difference of opinion based on how they really wanted to kind of put Spider-Man and Venom together. And so it ended up becoming that Venom 2 was P-13 as well. And when you think about Carnage, the first thing you think about is red blood, right? And, you know, that wasn't the way that that movie was. And imagine if it was. And I don't know. I can't say for a fact because Andy Serkis would never throw anybody in the bus. But it, it would be amazing if he had a creative vision that that was supposed to be rated R and what that would have felt like. Especially coming out, because I'm not going to blame necessarily Venom 1. I think Venom 1 was a good time. It was entertaining. But I felt like going into Venom 2, I was like, throw the chains off and let's see what happens. And I think that with this movie, we know for a fact, Zach has said, that there's a whole other movie that he's shot more scenes with, allowed things to go. It, it, he, he literally essentially is like, this is an alternative version of this whole entire movie, alternative universe. And so I personally would have loved to have had the rated R version first. And then if this, if the, you know, the toned down version, kind of like what they did with Deadpool, if it was a reverse effect, I think it would have been interesting what people's perception would have been. But um, from what we got, then now I'm going to kind of talk with some of the negatives. One of the biggest negatives for me was the first 30 minutes of the movie. Um, I, I think that Ed Sorkin's character is interesting enough, but it kind of felt like a rehash of what I've already seen from him from the first movie. And it was kind of just like, okay, it's the same as that character, but he's just off his rocker and he's supposed to be more menacing, but they don't give him anything to really do up until he gets there. And then yeah. when we're in the town with everybody, everybody's, you know, you know, building up who their characters are going to be going into the war. And again, this is a non-spoiler review, but there's a lot of that. And I just felt like they could have skipped it. I think that they skipped the first 30 minutes of this movie and went straight into it. I could have looked at it as more of an entertaining ride. Yeah. And, see, and you were saying a, something similar of that. There was like a battle I think we saw, and you were saying flat out they should have started there. Yeah. And I kind, I kind of, I kind of agree there. And and you're you're mentioning the uh, Ed Ed what Ed Screen Ed Screen's character. I think his name is. I don't know. But um, for me, a character that I feel like I don't want to say he wasn't 100 percent needed. But it, it just didn't really feel like it was as necessary, and oh, the emotional. Like yes, uh, my uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Michael Michelle. I don't know, but like it's just like I wasn't there for his character completely. It felt like one of those unneeded love or romance things that we just didn't, you know. I just wasn't behind it really, and then uh, later on, of course, he did, you know, a little bit of a sacrifice, if you will. But it just didn't seem. It didn't grab my heart. Like, it didn't pull my heartstrings. It, it really didn't. I don't know how many people are going to feel the same way I did, but it just, you know, I wasn't really hung on to his character fully. And um, it just, I wasn't there for it. I just, it felt like a lot of time was wasted when they were kind of trying to get you connected to their whole dynamic. But um, I just, I wasn't feeling it. Not at all. Yeah, I mean, I think that with his character is always trying to find ways of sacrificing and making sure that Cora is being taken care of, like whether that's him jumping on shit when he shouldn't or whether it's him like being real brave and bold. And I personally felt like Gunner as a character really wasn't needed. Um, I think that Charlie Hunnam's character would have been a more interesting like scoundrel role he always felt like the Han Solo. And mm -hmm. Gunner as a character is not Luke Skywalker. So I I don't really know. I, I did it didn't I think I understand his need to make her feel more human, but I think they could have used Atticus as a character to make that work. They could have used Charlie Hunnam's character to make that work. Um heck, they could have used Titus because I think Jimon Jimon to me had the best acting in the best role in this film mm -hmm. the most character progression i mean if you think about the amount of time he screen time he had in the first one compared to this one like they really let this amazing actor go and i mean physicality wise everybody's i mean every every zach movie everybody's gonna get in shape but it was the way he carried himself that would work and i think that their dynamic cora and titus's dynamic 
would have been a more interesting presentation, especially if she was kind of really alone because he was continuously challenging her as to who she is and to not mm -hmm. lie about what she's got to become. But yeah, I, I completely agree with your negatives with this. Um, and I think that that is going to be a hard pill to swallow because whereas the first one, you know, you're kind of getting your bearings, a lot of world building. But this one, you're in the thick of it. We're we're in the space battle now. Let's see where it happens. Um, the other thing is, I don't remember any space battles, like actual like flying space battles uh, that actually happened. That may be something that they're going to leave for something else. If Zach's got some more gas in the tank. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much enough for us to kind of go into because I could go and nitpick about like some cringy moments. I could nitpick about like the lack of blood or the believability about some of the scenes. Some of the scenes are very unbelievable. Certain characters do get often sacrificed. And I think that they just weren't given a fair shot or a fair shake because there wasn't any bearing to some of it. Um, but I think that they had a good even distribution because again, Cora as a character and Tata as a character had a lot more, but yeah, I think, uh, did you have any closing thoughts? Um, and then give me your official uh, letter grade. So um, I'm going to give this movie well, final thoughts. So again, I, I was a little disappointed. I mean, it still was an interesting watch, if you will, but I, I was not as happy with it as I really wanted to be because, you know, I really backed up the first film and, and truly was like, yo, you know, like just hang in there. They're doing all the building here. The next movie is just going to be action and action and action. And I, again, I was just a little underwhelmed, unfortunately. Um, I think, you know, if we do get another one, I, I really, I, I do want to watch it. I don't know what, what it is, but it just, I, I really am interested to see what they, you know, could potentially build with this. And, um, you know, but, Unfortunately, again, this this movie just didn't really hit everything, and I'm I'm not really a picky person, so it's just it's unfortunate that it didn't hit the mark. But um, I think I'm gonna give it a a a B minus C plus. It just you know there was just a lot of there was a lot of cool scenes. Again, the visuals were great, but there was just too many missed moments with the storytelling, and then some characters I just did not I I just couldn't find reasoning for some of the things they were doing, and I don't know I don't know it was it was different. Yeah, um, for me, I, I feel like a lot of what he feels. Um, I do think that acting wise, when it came to like a character like Jimmy and um, and Titus, I think that they did a really good job with Jimon and Anthony Hopkins with the scenes that they were in. Um, I think that Sophia is doing a really good job with what she's doing, but everything else surrounding that, they could have really went for it. And I feel like we haven't even reached what that plateau actually means because we don't really understand what the baseline is. We don't know what the unrated vision was. And I think that that's it's hard to sort what the baseline actually is, unfortunately. But I do think that once the action starts kicking, I think it's worth the entertainment ride. It's definitely worth going and checking out at least once. Um, and it, it may leave you with this impression you want to see more. It may be room for more. I'll leave it at that without spoiling it. But um, letter grade for me, initially, I'll be honest with you, <laughs> initially when I got done with the movie, uh, my initial letter grade was at a D plus initially. I, I went back and watching it again, um, and I'm kind of settled at like a C to C minus um, because I did, you know, even the second time around, I was like, I definitely really thought it kicked into gear after a certain point. But the first time watching it, and I can imagine some of you guys watching it, if you're watching at night and you're just like, oh, when is it going to get here? When is it going to get here? You may check out. And I want to account for that because there's some of you guys that may check out. But if you kind of give yourself <laughs> like splash of water in your face and go and check it out, I think you might actually find an entertaining ride out of this. So it's for me, it's a C minus or a C. That's that's where I'm kind of at uh, right in this middle of the road right now. But right. let me know what you guys think. Uh, go and check out. Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. Um, we've got some interesting interviews with the cast and Zach as well. So I want you guys to go and check that out. Um, but yeah, Busy, where can everybody find your content? Man? Find me at Busy Brawn everywhere, man. Busy Brawn on, um, well, yeah, Busy Reactions on Instagram. But Busy Brawn over here on Team JBS. Excited to post more content. Yeah, you recently just saw um, Fallout in the theaters. Yeah, it was a cool experience, man. Yeah. 
Yes, got a, we got a cool little cool little pin right here too. Nice. Yeah. yeah, if you want to get more insight on what Busy thought about Fallout, we've got a review available right now. We will be reviewing more Fallout. Got some other interesting things on Busy's channel that you guys want to go and check out. But uh thanks, Busy, for joining. Thanks everybody for watching. Talk to you guys later. Peace, people. Filing out the top of the